Join us as we unravel the magical chaos and dark secrets of Fantastic Beasts, the crimes of Grindelwald in this epic recap. At the end of the first film, Colin Farrell's character was revealed to be secretly working for the dark wizard Grindelwald. Newt Scamander, our intrepid hero, used one of his magical creatures to catch him. But the surprise was that Farrell wasn't just an ally of Grindelwald, he was actually Grindelwald in disguise. Yes, it was Johnny Depp all along. After being locked up in America, Grindelwald was set to be transferred to Europe. Yet in a shocking twist, it turned out he had once again duped everyone and escaped. Back in England, Newt Scamander was still the lovable, awkward magician we remember, but now he faced a new challenge, a mysterious woman named Lita Lestrange. Lita was not only Newt's high school crush, but had also recently become engaged to Newt's brother, a dedicated ministry orer. The ministry enlisted Newt's help to find Credence, the unsettling orphan from the first film. Credence, who had suppressed his magical abilities, had become an obscurus, a powerful and destructive cloud-like entity. Although it was thought he had perished at the end of the previous movie, Credence was very much alive. The Ministry's goal was to eliminate him before Grindelwald could recruit him. Grindelwald, with his suave and composed demeanor, might have seemed like a charming figure, but his true beliefs were far from benevolent. He thought that wizards were superior to muggles and should dominate them. Credence was a key part of Grindelwald's scheme, believed to be the long-lost son of a pure-blood family and linked to an important prophecy. Young Dumbledore also reached out to Newt, asking him to locate Credence, not to eliminate him, but to befriend him and help him turn to the side of good. Newt was puzzled by his involvement, especially since the current plot didn't seem to involve any magical creatures. With a series still branded as Fantastic Beasts, there was a need to feature some. Newt's apartment, a charming magical animal sanctuary, was brimming with potential for its own spin-off series. However, in this installment, his creature-rescuing adventures felt disconnected from the main storyline. Newt's American friends, Queenie Goldstein and Jacob Kowalski, made a visit to England. Despite Jacob, a muggle, having undergone rain amnesia at the end of the previous film, his deep affection for Queenie meant the memory charm didn't take effect. They had come to England to get married, as such unions were prohibited in America. However, Jacob's odd behavior quickly revealed that Queenie had put him under a love spell. Although Jacob was in love with her, he was reluctant to go through with the marriage due to the legal risks for Queenie. She insisted that if he truly loved her, he would help her defy the laws. Queenie then traveled to Paris to visit her sister Tina, who had previously been romantically involved with Newt. Tina was upset with Newt due to a mistake in the engagement announcement, which mistakenly listed Newt as marrying Lita. Meanwhile, Tina was in Paris searching for credence. The scene shifts to magical Paris, where a lively carnival is in full swing, Credence, on a quest to find his birth family, has become entangled with a new girlfriend from the circus. Her name is Najini, and she's cursed to eventually transform into a snake permanently, a role she will later play as Voldemort's familiar. At this point, Clarence helps Najini escape, inadvertently setting all the magical creatures loose across the city. Tina, searching for Credence, instead runs into a mysterious man. When Newt arrives in Paris, he's eager to help with the escaped magical creatures. However, his immediate focus is on finding Tina. He tracks down the enigmatic man, only to discover that he's actually a villain who locks Newt in a cell. In an odd twist, the villain then decides to take a nap, a development that everyone chooses to overlook due to the mayhem caused by a giant flower lion rampaging through Paris. Seizing the moment, Newt dives into action to wrangle the chaotic magical creatures. Newt attempts to explain to Tina that he's not actually engaged, but his awkwardness and the script's lackluster writing make it a clumsy affair. Before he can clear things up, they're interrupted by a dramatic Grindelwald attack. Grindelwald covers Paris with his dirty bedsheets as a way to announce a major rally for that night, using the absence of Twitter to his advantage. As the plot finally starts to pick up, Newt and Tina realize they need to thwart Grindelwald, likely involving Credence in some way. Their role in the movie seems a bit forced and disconnected. Just when you might start to lose interest, the story shifts back to Hogwarts. We meet a young Dumbledore, who is portrayed as an exceptionally talented professor. However, the Ministry of Magic is not happy with him. They insist that he's the only one powerful enough to confront Grindelwald, but Dumbledore reveals that he simply cannot. The Ministry of Magic insists that Dumbledore is the only wizard powerful enough to take on Grindelwald, but Dumbledore responds that he cannot. 
From Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, we know that Dumbledore and Grindelwald were once close friends and implied lovers who made a magical pact never to fight each other, believing that neither would turn to darkness. Now Grindelwald is trying to recruit Credence, though his exact motives remain a mystery. He tries to lure Credence by revealing secrets about his true identity. In response, Newt and Tina set off on a quest to the French Ministry archives to track down Credence's birth certificate. Along the way, Newt clears up the confusion about his engagement and gives Tina a heartfelt compliment on her eyes, which she appreciates, highlighting their growing affection for each other. Letta Lestrange shows up, searching for her family records, because she suspects that Credence might be related to the Lestranges. Since the records have been moved to the crypt, Lita decides to join forces with Newt and Tina. However, they face a challenge when the angry librarians unleash a swarm of magical cat, resulting in a chaotic scene with moving bookcases. Newt manages to escape using a larger teleporting cat. At the Lestrange crypt, they find themselves facing the random man, Credence, Nijini, and Jacob. The random man shares his backstory. He was born to a kind family, but Daddy Lestrange, who was infatuated with his mother, put a spell on her, leading to her death while giving birth to Lita Lestrange. The man swore an unbreakable vow to kill the person Daddy Lestrange loved most, but it turns out it wasn't Lita. Daddy Lestrange eventually had a son he loved and sent him to America for safety. However, when the boat sank, everyone thought the son had perished. It turns out Credence survived, and now the man feels bound by his vow to kill him. The man had a deep love for his mother and swore an unbreakable vow to kill the person Daddy Lestrange loved the most. However, it turned out that person wasn't Lita Lestrange, as Daddy Lestrange never truly cared for her. Instead, Daddy Lestrange eventually had a son he deeply loved and, to protect him from this vengeful man, sent him to America on a boat. When the boat sank, everyone believed the son had perished, but it was later revealed that Credence was that son and had survived. Bound by his vow, the man expressed regret about having to kill Credence and admitted he should have sworn to eliminate Daddy Lestrange instead. Lita Lestrange then revealed a shocking truth. On that fateful boat to America, she had been traveling with her crying baby brother, while the neighboring cabin had a quiet baby. She had swapped the babies, but the boat sank before she could switch them back, leading to the accidental death of her baby brother, a burden that haunted her. As for Credence's true identity, he remained the nameless orphan he always believed himself to be. At the Grindelwald rally, Jacob encountered Queenie, who was drawn to Grindelwald's seemingly progressive views on wizard-muggle marriages. Grindelwald's perspective on wizard-muggle relations was that muggles were inherently inferior, and thus, wizards should have the freedom to act as they wished. In his grand speech, he argued that wizards should dominate muggles, using the rapid advancement of muggle technology and the looming threat of World War II as justification for their rise. To make his case, Grindelwald conjured a dramatic ring of fire, inviting those who agreed with his vision to join him. Queenie was tempted to align with him, believing that this was the only way she and Jacob could be together, even though Jacob vehemently opposed Grindelwald's clear malevolence. Credence was eager to join Grindelwald, convinced that the Dark Wizard held the key to his true identity. Despite Nagini's first spoken plea to dissuade him, Credence remained steadfast, falling right into Grindelwald's scheme to recruit him willingly. Letta Lestrange also appeared to be considering aligning with Grindelwald, cryptically expressing her love to the Scamander brothers and leaving everyone guessing about her true feelings. In reality, she was merely feigning allegiance in a desperate bid to eliminate Grindelwald. Her attempt failed, and as a result, Grindelwald ended her life. As Grindelwald unleashed a fire dragon to wreak havoc on Paris, all seemed lost. But just in time, Nicolas Flamel, the legendary alchemist known for creating the Sorcerer's Stone, arrived to turn the tide. Earlier in the story, we'd learned that while Flamel had achieved eternal life, he was not blessed with eternal youth. With his expertise, he led the remaining wizards in a powerful counterspell, vanquishing Grindelwald's dragon and saving Paris. During the rally, Newt had noticed a peculiar piece of jewelry that Grindelwald was wearing. Luckily, the Niffler, a magical creature known for its thievery, managed to snatch it. Returning to Hogwarts, Newt handed the necklace over to Dumbledore. This item, taken from Grindelwald, might be the key Dumbledore needs to break his pact and confront Grindelwald directly. Grindelwald then dropped a bombshell. Credence had a hidden identity linked to a prominent wizarding family. Much like Rey in The Last Skywalker, Credence's true name was revealed to be Aurelius Dumbledore. 
The random chicken he had found turned out to be a phoenix, the emblematic creature of the Dumbledore family, supposedly confirming his heritage. Grindelwald manipulated Aurelius into believing that his brother, Albus, was a malevolent figure, convincing him to fully commit to Grindelwald's cause. With his magical powers now fully unleashed, Credence aligned himself completely with Grindelwald. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed reliving these moments, please show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Don't miss out on more captivating recaps like this one. Until next time, stay tuned for more epic adventures.